Social selling. What you need to realize is that Black Friday isn't just one day. There are many phases to it. Of course, there's Black Friday Day, Black Friday Weekend, Cyber Monday. We all know about these periods. They're the most important days for e-commerces all over the world. And conversion rates on those days, on Shopify, for instance, uh, they're on average two times better for any store than on uh, any other day of the year. My name is Antoine Gagné and welcome to a new episode of Social Selling. Fall is a big period for people who operate online businesses. With Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas and Boxing Day, it can become very difficult for an e-commerce owner or marketing director to plan accordingly its marketing strategy. You also need to be careful since most of the marketing platforms become very crowded with all the advertisers trying to win the auction at the same time. With that in mind, how should you approach this period? What kind of budget should you have in mind to perform and make the most out of it? Again with me today, Nate Ross, Senior Media Buyer at J7 Media, will explain his four-step strategy that he and his team used to generate close to $700,000 in sales with only a $100,000 investment. So Nate, how does this approach work? Yeah, um, thanks, Antoine, and uh, thanks for having me on the, the podcast again. So as you mentioned, we're, uh, we're going to talk Black Friday today. And um, what we're going to do is uh, basically I'm going to walk you through the analysis and decision making process that led us to build a Black Friday marketing strategy, which generated over $500,000 in revenue with a media spend of $100,000. So we're going to go through an actual real life case and discuss the steps we took in order to highlight some key pieces of information, uh, build a data driven strategy and engage in the right marketing schemes, uh, as well as use the right tools and content type to capitalize on, uh, as you mentioned, one of the the most important periods for uh, e-commerces. So um, really, like in order to build a, a great e-commerce Black Friday strategy, we're, we're definitely talking about a four step process. First, you need to lay down your goals. So it's super simple. You need to know what you're aiming for. Second is a deep analysis. So in order to step in the right direction, you need to understand where, when, and how you usually have any success selling online. So what's been working for you in the past and how can you uh, leverage this going f- uh, further? And then third, you need to understand, appreciate, and leverage the different stages or chapters which make up the Black Friday period. And then fourth, build the strategy and timeline. And you could probably uh, add a fifth step uh, in there, which would be hold your breath, stick to the plan, uh, yeah. hope for the best, and you'll, you'll probably uh, get that one uh, later on. <laughs> so let's uh, let's jump right into it. So deciding on your goals, this is probably one of the most underrated aspects of having the right Black Friday uh, strategy. It's understanding your expectations, what you should be aiming for in terms of sales goals. The very first thing you should be doing is setting your the right revenue objective. Knowing your uh, revenue objective or order amount objective is super important for three reasons. First, if you're uh, listening to the po- this podcast in late spring or early summer, having the right expectations in terms of maximizing your revenue for the period will allow you to order the right amount of product before it's too late. So the right yeah. amount of inventory, that's super important. Uh, you should definitely not um, go over that step because it will get super important. Second of is um, it will help you set your marketing budget. And then third, and most importantly, it will allow you to uh, set the right offer or discount for the period. So understanding... One thing, one yeah. thing very important to mention here, sorry to interrupt you, Nate, is like you said, we are recording this podcast on May May 11 today. And basically the Black Friday is not something that you just plan one month before the Black Friday. You don't plan your Black Friday in October or September. It's something that you should have in mind uh, starting in January, right? Uh, we're in May today and here at J7 Media as a Facebook advertising agency, we manage close to $1 million per month in media spend. And most of this budget, we start to, to manage way, way more budget close to this period. But the strategy start 
so much before. It's mm-hmm. it's like a couple of months before that you need to to plan that. And then I, I think it's very important for people who are listening today that knowing the inventory that you will have uh, that will be available for you is the number one thing uh, that you that you need to think right now. Because how many people, Nate, have we seen in 2019? They just order you know, a bit of inventory, not that much. And then they've been only able to operate during Black Friday. And on Cyber Monday, it was done. Yeah, they didn't have any more inventory. So if Cyber Monday is out, Christmas is out as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's super frustrating for them because it's it's such a an important period. And then also, you, you can you can probably bite on a little more than you can chew at that time. Uh, we're going to talk it, uh, about that a little bit in the, the episode, but there's other periods right around the corner that can kind of back you up uh, uh, also. And if you, you know that you have certain types of collections who tend to sell more during that period, it's definitely a great idea to uh, order a bit more than you would probably uh, expect to sell. And uh, totally. yeah, it is super frustrating for, for many of our, our clients. As you mentioned, they, they just didn't have enough inventory. They were sold out on the first day. And then you just miss out on, on sales that you would have had during the, the whole weekend and on Cyber Monday. So it's just an opportunity that you missed uh, right there. And then just to, to, to continue, like understanding the value of your inventory and how much profits you can get out of it uh, at a, a given discount is just crucial to setting up the right base for your Black Friday uh, marketing strategy. You need, need to understand that also promoting crazy types of discounts may generate higher amounts of orders, but overdoing it and giving away too much uh, it may very well compromise your net profit margin and maybe hurt your brand in many ways as well. Uh, in the instance that we're talking about in this episode, our client understood that leveraging a 60% off discount on all of his collections would allow him to maximize his orders, revenues, and profits. But that's definitely something everyone should just sit down and think uh, extensively about. And as you, as we mentioned, in terms of ordering the right levels of inventory, I think you should definitely not be afraid, as I I said earlier, to bite on a little more than you can chew. Black Friday has a very interesting timing. If you uh, don't sell as much as you thought you would, there's Christmas right around the corner. Um, Mm -hmm. There's Boxing Day in Canada as well that that can just back you up, basically. Um, (laughs) Yeah, totally. So let, let's jump into the, uh, the analysis and the investigations uh, that we made in, in terms of uh, setting up the, the right base for the... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so just to be sure, for, for people who are, who are listening today, so first thing, know the kind of revenue that you want, that you want to achieve. That, that is very important. We're doing that right now in May with most of our clients, mm-hmm. just setting up the exact uh, you know, revenue objective that they have in mind. This is the most important thing. Based on that, after that, like Nate mentioned it, uh, you can plan your inventory and from there you're able to plan your marketing budget and also your offer as well, right? Because mm-hmm. if you don't, uh, if you don't know exactly the kind of revenue that you're able to, uh, that you, that you want to achieve, and then if you don't know the inventory that you will have, it's really, really hard to plan your marketing budget and also Mm -hmm. the right offer the right discount for the for the black friday period Mm -hmm. which uh, which basically are the the base to setting up the the right strategy uh you can't be really be uh analyzing anything or investigating anything uh and and setting up a strategy if you don't have that base to work with of course so uh, definitely it's just the the most important uh, aspect of the strategy is setting up the right base and that will lead lead you to doing the right work afterwards and then in terms of yeah go ahead and can you can you just walk us through maybe you said the client that we're talking about here sixty percent the offer that he was trying to that he wanted to do for the Black Friday exactly he uh, he came up with that I think the uh, the client himself is uh, the best position to have access to the information in terms of uh, what types of revenues he's uh, aiming at uh, how much basically uh, gross margin he's doing uh, usually on these uh, these products and then he's able to set the mi- the right marketing budget and uh, discount to go and and be aligned with uh, all these metrics and that's what he set uh, for the the period he understood also that it was important for him to have a clear offer uh, easy to communicate and it was super simple for us as well in terms of building the content and ex- communicating the offer to the our audiences the discount was simple, 60% off anything on the website. And then we'll, we'll also break it down into different types of periods as we, uh, uh, we go along doing the, the podcast. But, um, the, the base, the base offer was that 60% off anything. And that's what we could uh, work with. And he had enough inventory and what kind of revenue we wanted to, to achieve, uh, as a company. 
his goal originally was to make five hundred thousand dollars for the period. So we're really talking about the the whole month of November uh, leading leading up to to Cyber Monday, which was on the second uh, of December for uh, for twenty nineteen. Uh, so he had a marketing budget of one hundred thousand dollars, and his goal was to uh, make five hundred thousand with that that one. Okay, so K. keep that in mind, guys. Okay, so. Five hundred thousand dollars in in revenue. That that's what the client is looking at. It's looking to do one hundred thousand dollars in in marketing budget and an offer of sixty percent. That's that was really clear for us, right? When the mm-hmm. client is able to communicate this kind of information to us, to to the agency, to a freelancer who's maybe going to do the 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 work for the client. That's where it becomes really, really easy because you're going to talk about that in your second point and your third point. When we have this kind of foundation, it's easier for us to know exactly what kind of budget, where we should allocate the budget down the mm-hmm. road, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I, th- I think you uh, you said the right word. It's having the right foundation that we can use and play around with uh, to be able to really leverage the different periods in the Black Friday, and um, and have the right marketing schemes. So let's jump to step number two, which is uh, analyze and investigate. So there are three main things we decided to investigate before taking any uh, type of strategic decisions. Number one was the uh, CPM, so cost per thousand. Just as a quick reminder uh, to anyone uh, listening to us right now, the CPM is basically the cost that it that someone would have to to pay to show 1,000 impressions of an ad to their audience on Facebook. So Facebook mm-hmm. is a is a bid. You're bidding against other advertisers on the platform, and the CPM is simply put. The cost that it will uh, cost you to put 1,000 impressions of your ad in front of your uh, audience. Uh, so that was the first metric we decided to take a look at, and we were lucky to have last year's data to be able to uh, take a look at it and uh, see how much it would cost us to run ads during the month of November. And so we uh, decided to take a look at two main timeframes. First was pre Black Friday, and also during Black Friday. So uh, the first. Uh, time frame was from November 1st, 2018 to November 21st, 2018. And uh, the CPM for that period, so before Black Friday, was $8.99. So $8.99, uh, that, that, those are dollars. It cost us $8.99 to put 1,000 impressions of our ad in front of our uh, audience during that time period. Mm-hmm. And then when Black Friday started, so from November 22nd through November 26th, which was the uh, Thursday just before Black Friday leading up to Cyber Monday, the CPM shot up around two times uh, to go to 1789. So wow. during the days of Black Friday, it would cost the client around two times as much to put the same ads in front mm-hmm. of his uh, same audience. So that crazy. was uh, pretty crazy. Um, and maybe to give context why this kind of thing is going to happen, it's just because more people, like we mentioned it earlier, more people are going to advertise their product when this period happens, right? <laughs> Black Friday is a time of the year where everybody wants to sell a lot of stuff because people are willing to uh, to spend a lot of money, right? Just before Christmas, it's the perfect timing. So because a lot of advertisers are on the platform, the platform just become more expensive, so mm-hmm. it's very, very important to look at these numbers because <laughs> like you said it, everything being equal, you place, you know, marketing message between November 22nd and November 26th. It's two times mm-hmm. more expensive than it was the month before. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, definitely something you have to consider. And we'll also uh, go back to that point a little bit later on in, in the podcast. So just to, to jump to that second uh, thing we decided to investigate as well uh, was the conversion window. So Mm -hmm. to basically to understand your sales cycle better, Facebook allows you to analyze your conversions through different time windows. For instance, uh, you can take a look at your results. Well, actually the results that were generated inside the next 24 hours after seeing an ad, but also seven or 28 days after showing the the ads to your audience. When taking a look at our 2018 data, we uh, realized that a great deal of our conversions were happening between seven to 28 days after seeing an ad. Actually, one of the best performing campaigns during Black Friday of the previous year was a lead generation campaign, which had a ROAS of 125, looking at the, the one day conversion window but a ROAS of 384 looking at the 28-day conversion window. So what does it tell you? We'll get back to that in a, in a, <laughs> a, a few moments. Um, <laughs> right. 
for, for that, that third thing we decided to uh, investigate uh, was the audience. So uh, what we were trying to understand was the difference in performance between cold and warm audiences. Naturally, you'd expect your warm audience to perform better. But the figures we analyzed for 2018 were indicating that our targeting audiences, retargeting, sorry, audiences performed as much as four to five times better than cold audiences during Black Friday days. Mm-hmm. So uh, just to recap everything and, and uh, show you exactly how this did this data help us in our decision making process. Yep. So the CPM uh, cost per thousand. Well, we understood that connecting with our audiences on Black Friday days and uh, up to Cyber Monday would cost us up to twice as much uh, than it would in the weeks before. The conversion window uh, analysis taught us that we make three to four times as much money when we continually, continuously show ads to the same audience for several weeks. Um, the fact that our sales cycle isn't so short and that our audiences need to do some thinking and considering before buying, uh, it meant that we should focus on preparing our audiences. Yeah. And then the uh, cold vs. warm audience analysis, it taught us that pushing harder on our cold audience expansion uh, or connecting with new people on Black Friday day wouldn't get us the the best return on our ad spend, basically. Yeah, because the point is, if you're getting, you just mentioned it earlier, point number three, I think, in your bucket number two, you're making four to five times more money with your warm audiences than your cold audiences, which makes Mm -hmm. sense, right? Which makes sense. Most of the e-commerce clients, you know, your conversion will come from remarketing, but knowing that your remarketing is as good as four to five mm-hmm. times that what you see with your cold audiences. And let's say uh, that every time you invest $1 on cold audiences, you're making $1 in normal time, in normal time. Imagine during Black Friday, Black Friday when the platform is two times more expensive, right? You, you clearly know that it will not be a good timing to invest mm-hmm. massively on cold audience and you should focus way, way more on people who already know your brand. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I think looking at this, these uh, data, these data points, basically one by one isn't so relevant, but looking at them uh, together is super interesting. And basically it indicated that preserving a large chunk of our budget for a Black Friday day, it could very well compromise, compromise our, our success. Basically at that point, we, we just had it and it was pretty uh, obvious to us looking at this data. If we wanted to maximize our success during Black Friday, we had to invest a majority of our budget before Black Friday. Mm-hmm. So uh, that was kind of an uh, epiphany that we had at, at that point. Uh, and we just knew it. Basically, uh, the data was clear. Uh, we were taking data-driven decisions. It was clear to us. The data indicated it. we had to invest a lot of money to prepare our audiences, prepare our Black Friday, rather than just focus on the, the peak days when yeah. everyone is also investing on the platform. Uh, the, the logical thing to do was to invest before Black Friday. Of course, because your sell cycle is longer, your remarketing is converting more, and then, you know, the, the platform is just way, way too expensive. I think we're, we're going to get back a little bit later with, you know, with how the, we allocated the budget in different phases, mm-hmm. uh, why we invested massively before uh, the Black Friday period. So, but, but now I think it's really interesting to add this kind of data that we analyze. And mm-hmm. for the moment, you got this data, Nate. Uh, I'm looking at your point number three here. You're talking about leveraging Black Friday's different phases. Can you mm-hmm. tell me a little bit more about that? Well, considering that we weren't going to spend most of our budget during the days of Black Friday and Cyber Monday, mm-hmm. we kind of had to go back to the drawing board and reset our thinking on everything. What you need to realize is that Black Friday isn't just one day. There are many phases to it. Of course, there's uh, Black Friday Day, Black Friday Weekend, Cyber Monday. Uh, we all know about these uh, these periods. They're the most important days for e-commerces all over the world. Uh, you said it in your your intro. And conversion rates on the on those days on Shopify, for instance, uh, they're on average two times better for any store than on uh, any other day of the year. So mm-hmm. conversion rates for this this Black Friday Day. Uh, weekend and, and Cyber Monday period are super high. Mm-hmm. So they're definitely not something you should uh, minimize and you should definitely put some focus and some time on this period for sure. But still, there are other very important phases to Black Friday that a lot of people tend to ignore or underestimate. And mm-hmm. leveraging these different phases allow for other benefits like audience expansion or to focus on different types of buyers. Uh, and if you play your cards right during November, it should give you a net on any other business. Thanks for 
being with us for the first part of our podcast, uniquely focused on the Black Friday strategy that you need to implement if you want to thrive in November. That being said, in the next episode, we'll cover step three and four of our plan, which are understanding the Black Friday calendar, because yes, Black Friday is not only one day, it's way more than that, and knowing where you should allocate your budget during that time of the year. Thanks again for being with us and see you soon for a new episode of Social Selling. Social Selling. Social Selling. Social selling.